Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to the Bold Moves podcast. I'm the host, Mandy Muchy, and this is episode number 77. Today, I had the pleasure to chat with Sarah Cruz, who left Portland, Oregon last October to travel the world. She did not know it at the time, but she started a podcast the day that she left. Well, I guess she knew that she was starting a podcast, but what she didn't know was that her physical journey was not going to be as profound as the inward journey to self-discovery that she is still on. It's taken her all over the world to Turkey, to Spain, to Israel, Hungary, Romania. She's been to a lot of cool places, but it seems like what has impacted her most is what she has learned about herself. She has a podcast herself, as I mentioned, and really gets in on some deep self-exploration in our chat. She also has shared what she's learned and will be giving one winner a 30-day personal roadmap or guidebook to self-discovery. So if you're interested in that or you're interested in the story, please stay tuned until the end so you can learn how to win. All right, without further ado, here is Sarah Cruz. Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to the Bold Moves Podcast. I am with Sarah Cruz today, another fellow podcaster. Super excited to have you on. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So obviously, you know, the show is called Bold Moves. You've obviously made some bold moves, including apparently dog ownership or (laughs) knowing someone who owns one. (laughs) You can hear the little barking in the background. Um, Yeah, it's cute. (laughs) So let's hear some of your story and kind of what what you think got you onto this podcast. Okay, well, I mean, to start out, I feel like in some ways I have made some bold moves in my life. Um, More recently, I pretty much packed up everything that I had and moved out of my place in Portland, Oregon to basically travel indefinitely. So right now I'm actually living in Spain in um, the Gran Canarias. And I mean, it's not my first time leaving the country. I've also gone backpacking solo in South America. I studied and lived in Thailand. I went backpacking in Europe a few years ago as well. Mm -hmm. So I feel like externally looking at me, I feel like there are bold moves that I've made. But more recently, I've been kind of documenting my spiritual journey in the form of a podcast. And I feel like that's the boldest (laughs) because it's the scariest thus far. Okay. Well, you took away one of my normal questions, which is usually one of the, what's the scariest thing you've done? So I guess we'll jump right into that. (laughs) Yeah, Um, exposing my soul. (laughs) Okay. So tell me more about that. What is, what do you talk about in your podcast aside from your travels? What does a general episode look like? Um, so I'm, Basically documenting my journey going inwards because I feel like I spent a lot of my life repressing my emotions, not even trying to understand myself completely. And this podcast is basically my journey of personal discovery. And I mean, every episode is different, but it kind of it kind of goes in waves. Like one episode was about my repressed emotions, so I kind of talked about that. The other okay. one was about forgiveness. So it's kind of things that are happening consciously for me that I tend to go towards in the podcast. If that makes okay. sense. I think it does. That sounds very interesting. <laughs> so, is it related to the travel, or are you kind of on a, both an outer and inner journey that kind of help each other, or how does that work? Yeah, so I feel like they're definitely related, but I talk more about spirituality. Um, So going into the trip, I pretty much opened myself up to the unknown and pretty much going in the direction of joy, but also fear. So not really having an itinerary 
it's been leading me to where I need to go. Like, for example, when I was in Istanbul, the thing that I learned was that my root chakra is a little bit unstable at the moment. So everywhere I go, there's kind of a reflection of what's going on internally based on where I'm at in the world. Okay. So I so just kind of, there's a relationship. <laughs> okay. How did you figure out about your root chakra and what does that exactly mean for anyone who's not familiar with the chakras? Yeah, so the chakras, you have basically seven main energetic points in your body. Mm -hmm. And your root chakra is the one that's located at the base of your spine. And that is pretty much your energetic link to the world. So, you, you know, as people, we have our soul bodies, right? right? So that is the energetic link that is rooted, that is connected to security, foundation. And while I was there in Istanbul, I realized that, I don't really have a sense of security. I'm pretty much afraid of everything. Okay. And, <laughs> and just being there and opening myself up to what I needed to be taught, it showed me that that is a place I need to start and that is where I need to start working on. And that is what I feel like I need to do in order to move forward spiritually. That's really interesting because I would maybe thinking about the chakras – I would maybe say that given my past and a mm -hmm. lot of things that have been in my life, I probably also have an unstable root chakra, but instead of it manifesting the way that it sounds like your, yours has, I feel like I'm afraid of nothing. And it takes me a really long time when I sit and think about, okay, what am I afraid of? Like, I can't think of like, so I don't even know if I'm just out of touch with like what actually scares me or if I'm uh -huh. just somehow like so disconnected that I'm just like, what? I'm fine. I'm not afraid of oh, anything. <laughs> so, it, can, it can go either way. It yeah, can really I guess go so either we're, way. We're the opposite ends of the same extreme. <laughs> it sounds uh -huh, like. Exactly. Well, that's really cool that you're it works. learning that. Yeah. So what are you going to do uh -huh. to, you said you're going to start working on it. So what does that look like? That is finding, I feel like it's finding security within myself first mm -hmm. because growing up I moved a lot. So I feel like I didn't come from a very stable environment. So now that I'm sure. learning that I am creating the life that I'm living, I feel like in order for me to have that stability that I need, I need to create it myself. So <laughs> it's basically going inside and then figuring out what I truly want when it comes to what does it feel like to be safe and secure, basically. With you saying that part of the reason perhaps for these fears and the requirement for work in this area being that you moved around a lot as a younger person, how does now being a nomad, basically a little gypsy, <laughs> how does that help or hinder progress in that area? Oh God, this is like, <laughs> I feel like this is like the story of my life. Like, I feel like in a way it kind of hinders me a little bit because I'm so used to moving forward and moving on and leaving things behind that in a way I feel like it could come to almost as if, almost as if though I'm running away from something. Sure. So when I feel like I need to move on to the next location or I want to go somewhere else, I don't know if, it's because I actually want to or because it's a defense mechanism that I've sure. picked up by moving so much. So I feel like that's where I'm at kind of currently is trying to understand what home is because I, I don't know, <laughs> sure. which sounds really weird. And um, I'm actually flying. I'm from Southern California, so I'm flying back there in about uh, a month. Okay. So that's, that's bringing up all these other issues because I mean, it's technically my home, but like, I don't feel at home, but why don't I feel at home? So it's just, did, it, did that answer your question? I don't it, it does a little bit. I mean, I can identify with not feeling at home really because when I was growing up, my parents were divorced and I spent a lot of time with my grandparents as well. So I basically had three homes and it wasn't, I never spent more than like 72 hours in one home. And that includes like school, mm. 
like not taking out school time. So three days tops was like where I was going to be in one spot. So, I mean, I guess oh, thinking damn, about yeah. the term root chakra, I didn't really put my roots down anywhere because I was moving all over the place. So I could definitely see how you would feel that way because I feel the same way. Like I call before, if I'm in my hometown, I'll call my parents and be like, is it okay if I come over? And they're like, what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I exactly. Can, like I can just walk in and it's not because of them. It's just how I kind of feel. So I definitely like that part makes sense. And then I guess as you're choosing destinations, it's, you know, really digging deep and deciding, am I going toward something or away from Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I try not to, whenever I interview someone who has a podcast, if I don't already listen to it or if they have a book, I try not to, you know, look into it too much so that I don't go into the conversation and not have the questions that my listeners might have, you know, since I would know. So I'm trying to discuss yeah. it as a new <laughs> thing right now because that's how the listeners would. Get it. Oh yeah, makes okay. sense. Totally. So if I'm asking questions that you're like, oh, this is pretty basic or anything, that would be <laughs> No, fine. it's all good. It's all okay. good. Cool. So then how do you decide, you said you have no itinerary except obviously going home in about a month. How do you decide where you're going and when and how, how does that work? Yes. So I basically make my decisions based on what's calling my name. So for example, when I was in Istanbul. For some reason, I just kept on hearing the words Israel and Dead Sea, and it felt like internally I was being pulled in that direction. So, I mean, if it's going to keep on calling me, I feel like at that point I have to listen and I have to go towards it, which is why I bought my ticket to California because it was literally calling my name. Like I could feel myself being drawn there and at that point, I feel like I have to listen. If something, if something keeps on coming up, it's for a reason. And I don't know what that is until I get there. So. Interesting. So what have yeah. been some of the experiences you had so far in this journey? When did you start? And what are Yeah, some so I, I moved out of my place in Portland last October. So I feel like it's been around eight months. Okay. Um, so like I said, like I was just kind of being open to the experience as a whole. So it brought me to Turkey and then it brought me also to Israel. And then from there, Romania and Bulgaria randomly. <laughs> okay. And one of the things that I'm learning though, is like when I was in Israel, the thing that it taught me, which may sound a little bit weird, but when I was there, it felt as though I in a way, was shown my heart, okay. if that makes any sense. Sure. <laughs> so, um, I mean, experiences like that, it was very powerful because it taught me that, like, the love that I'm looking for is already inside of me. And I feel like we hear that and we know that we don't actually fully, completely experience it. And until I feel like you experience it with your heart and your mind at the same time, then it doesn't, it's not true to you, right? So... Stuff like that. And then being in Spain, one of the things that I've learned is that I actually need people because I'm very um, independent, <laughs> obviously. <Okay. laughs> so <laughs> I, think, I think being open to where I'm being drawn to physically also teaches me a lesson that I need to learn in the grander scheme of things. Okay. So it's just... <sighs> been a lot. <laughs> Again, I feel like we have something in common because I feel like I'm still learning that I need people. So I, I hear yeah. you there. Um, on that note, with like logistically speaking, are you by yourself 100% of the time? Are you crashing at friends places? How is this working with interpersonal relationships and even just like the logistics of lodging and travel while you're on this journey? Yeah, so for the first few months, I was staying at my friend's house in Turkey. After that, I met up with another friend who lives in Spain, and we traveled for two weeks together. Okay. And then after that, when I came to actually stay and live in Spain on the island, I, I came by myself. 
So okay. I've been pretty much staying at people's houses, like my friends, or doing an Airbnb. I stayed at a co-working and co-living place for a little bit, which was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so other so other people traveling and you know working at the same time, which sure is what I how I can fund my trip. Obviously, I'm working, um, but but yeah, I feel like at this point, I'm probably ready to get my own apartment somewhere. <laughs> Okay. Then you have to There's a lot roots somewhere. <laughs> I know that's scary. That's scary. <laughs> so you mentioned that you're working. What are you doing for work? I was going to ask how you're able to fund it and yeah. make this work. I work, I work for a website. I basically prepare um, people's documents. So their legal documents. Okay. And I've been doing that for about two years and I can do it for my laptop. So I don't really have, any physical location constraints. So I took that opportunity to leave the country. That's awesome. I think a lot uh-huh. of people dream of being location independent. So that's very mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, yeah, you might not be able to answer this because it seems like you're doing a lot of things on a whim, but when you come back home to California, <laughs> how long do you plan on staying? I don't know. <laughs> I think, I think, I think at least a few months. Okay. I think I'm ready to go back and kind of obviously see my my family and friends, but I really want to also explore California because I haven't really done too much hiking there. So I'm probably going to go back and get a car and then just continue wandering wherever I'm being pulled to. Okay. That's pretty (laughs) cool. So we'll see. Where in Southern California are you from? Dana Point, which is in Orange County. Yeah. Okay. I've been there actually. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you left almost because it's a really pretty place. <laughs> it, it is really pretty. Yeah. I stayed there for a few days and we'll never forget doing like Pio, which is Pilates and yoga on a cliff and just having, hearing the woman who created it be like, okay, do downward dog and look at the palm trees or turn and, yes. face, turn and face the ocean. And I'm like, this is the best place in the world. <laughs> My kind of yoga. <laughs> yeah, it yes. would be amazing. <laughs> well, if you make it up to Northern California or if I happen to be in the LA area, because I go down there a lot, maybe we can go on a hike or something. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the adventure. So Exactly. When- When you set out on this journey, did you know that you were going to be doing the inward journey as well? Or were you like, oh, vacation, I don't have to be anywhere. I'll just go wherever I want and work around the world. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I didn't think it was going to go so deep internally, obviously. Um, I kind of just set out and because I started my podcast like the day that I left. So it was like, well, if I'm going to leave the country, I might as well throw a podcast on top of it. Um, and no, it's, it's been evolving. At first I was more focused on, I was like half and half travel, half spirituality. And then I realized like, I just want to talk about spirituality. So (laughs) why, why fight it? Um, but yeah, no, it's been evolving and I don't know. It's been a lot. It's been a lot. That's really a lot's coming up recently. <laughs> yeah. That's really interesting. The, a guest that I had on, it'll be probably a little more than a month ago by the time that this airs, but her name's Devin Sisson and she wrote a cookbook for part of her master's degree. And initially she was just like, oh, I'm writing a cookbook. But then she really dug deep into like her feelings on food and eating and oh, basically yes. like the same thing that you're saying where you're burying your soul. She felt like she was burying her soul. So her book's called Kitchen Intuition. And oh my God, how cool. <laughs> yeah, she was like, oh, I just thought I was writing a cookbook. And next thing I know, I'm like really nervous about what I'm putting out there. <laughs> <laughs> You're like crying as you're doing it. Right. (laughs) She even said she like stopped for a while because she couldn't. (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah. Kind of a crazy story. But again, you start off doing one thing and then don't realize where exactly that's going to take you. So that's pretty cool. If it has to come out, it has to come out somehow, right? So, exactly. You've got to so, bury your soul eventually. Right. So since that's the scariest thing you've done is the podcast and burying your soul, like how do you push past that fear 
of, you know, like, what am I putting out there? How do you hit upload every time you have an episode? What would you recommend to push past fear? Oh, God. I think the scariest part, honestly, isn't uploading it to the world. I think the scariest part is actually me confronting the truth within myself. Okay. So, so the scariest part is actually recording it. Um, I mean, at some point, I feel like at some point you have to decide, either are you going to do it or are you not going to do it? And I mean, almost every episode I have like that intense fear. I'm like, holy shit, I have to go deep within my repressed emotions right now. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Our last episode, I was like contemplating death. I was like, okay, these are some heavy topics. Um, but it's definitely a, a battle between the mind and what you actually want to do. Um, one of my philosophies in life is like, if something scares you, that means you have to do it. Like there is a reason that you're afraid to do something. It's not, it's not what you're doing that scares you. It's something deeper that's happening inside of you. Right. So I feel like if something scares me, that's a sign that I have to do it. Even if I like, don't want to. Like that. so. That's kind of the Thanks. theme of the podcast. So that works out perfectly. One exactly. Thing yeah. I'm curious about is um, when you're uploading your podcast, do you share it with your friends and family and stuff on social media? Or do you kind of just anonymously have this podcast? Because I feel like sometimes <laughs> there are some things that it's okay to tell strangers because you never have to deal with them in face to face, you might never see them again or whatever. But then it's mm -hmm. another thing completely to have, like, not just your inner circle, because you would probably tell them anyway, but you know, your coworkers or someone you went to high school with or whatever random Facebook connections you have. What is how does that work for you? Yeah, so I think the first few episodes, I mean, I considered myself a closet podcaster. Like I wouldn't tell anyone I had a podcast. I didn't want to talk about it. I'm like, is that your business? Okay. <laughs> Which is, I know. This funny, is for I'm the whole world, except people who know me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but as, as time goes on, I'm getting more comfortable. Like, I mean, telling my friends is, was the easier part too, just because, I mean, they're your friends. They sure like you, you don't, if you don't, you can leave. Um, but I still have a hard time with my family. Like there's definitely episodes. I don't want them to hear. Sure. Like, I think part of the reason is because some of the pain that I'm going through is re related to my childhood. So it's like, sure. how do you talk about something that's happening when someone that was there that affected you is going to listen to it? That's right. kind of, um, the scary part, but yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't, like if my dad were to listen to my podcast, I'd be like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of like cross your fingers that he never decides to pick up, open the podcast app or. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, but I've accepted the fact that my mom will listen to it. So that's okay. Um, but yeah, no, that's still a journey that I'm going through. That's amazingly brave to me because I'll be honest and say that there's a lot of my story that I haven't shared because there are people who are still alive who I don't want to like muddy that relationship if it if I'm going public with things. You know what I'm saying? So oh, that's yeah. amazing that even though you're like, please dad, don't <laughs> that you're still like <laughs> he could and if he does. So that's awesome. Like, good for you for that. I really admire Thank you. For you. That. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Has it brought you closer or impacted any of your relationships with your friends and family at all who are listening and maybe have a better understanding of you now, or at least it's maybe fostered um, interesting conversations about the soul searching you're doing? Yeah, I think my relationships have definitely improved. Mm -hmm. Um, because I tend to push people away. I tend to not want to get close to anyone. And I tend to just kind of like retreat and do my own sure. thing. So I think that the reason they're improving is because I'm developing that relationship within myself. Sure. Because there, I mean, there are parts of us that we like, I'm sure everyone like we're afraid to go to. And I feel like you can't, expose that part of yourself to someone else unless you've been there first. 
So I feel like the the only thing this podcast is doing for me is it's making me more open to people and which I feel like is time. Like I can't, I can't live my life like running from anything and people included, right? There's people everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much (laughs) most places. (laughs) You could maybe like, I don't know, Montana or (laughs) Greenland or something. There's gotta be some that are no people. (laughs) There's bears. (laughs) That's a different story. <laughs> I don't know which is scarier sometimes. <laughs> if you can sign up to be one of the first to go to space and then just stay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just kidding. I don't want to encourage or discourage the journey that you're on. Here's an alternative. Here's an easy route. Space. <laughs> just get the planet. You're good. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so what prompted you to decide to do this, both – to document it via a podcast and to leave Portland, which I've heard it's amazing. I haven't been there yet, but leave and go check out what the world has to offer. Um, well, when I was living in Portland, I was pretty depressed for a little bit. Um, I lived there for a year. And I feel like halfway through it when, you know, the sun went away (laughs) and the clouds came, that kind of uh, triggered some sadness that I had going on inside of me. And living there and just being depressed every day, like, I had had to change. Like, I needed to do something different. Like, I needed something different. I couldn't keep living my life this way. So, I mean, I didn't really intend to leave the country for so long initially I was like okay well I'll I'll go to Turkey for a month and okay now it's like two months well now it's three months well now it's I should probably just move out of my apartment while I'm at it right um so I mean there was that core issue that I think I needed to address but in terms of how everything has evolved it's just kind of guiding me to where I need to go so did that answer your question? I'm sorry. I feel like I'm so scattered brains. I'm an INTP, um, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, you just like wanted to kind of get out of the dreary Portland and what it was bringing up for you. So you decided you needed something new. Is that kind of what you're, you're saying? Yeah, I, I needed to leave my depression. Like I needed to do something and I had... I didn't know what else to do besides buy a one way ticket somewhere. Honestly, like I didn't know what else to do. Okay. So that's what I did. Yeah. So then when you did that, cause then you said after a couple of months, you thought I should probably move out of my apartment. Did you just think that you were going briefly and you left everything or most things in your apartment? And then if that's the case, how did you, did you send someone for your stuff? And <laughs> how does that work? Oh yeah. No. So, when I bought my ticket originally, I was only going to be gone for like a month or two. And then as I got closer to the departure date that I was like, okay, well, I might as well stay for three. Cause I didn't have a ticket back at this point. Right. So, um, no, as soon as it got closer, that's when I was like, well, I might as well just say screw it and go completely into like unknown territory in every freaking direction. I'm kind of an extremist too, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that answered your question. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. No, it's all good. So uh, (laughs) another question I have, and if you don't know the answer, it's totally okay. But do you know what your purpose is? I don't know if maybe that's come up in any of the soul searching so far or any hints toward a direction or. It's been coming up lately. I feel like I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting closer to understanding it. I've had a few realizations while I'm here and I feel like the thing that I'm on this planet to do is help heal. Okay. And I'm not exactly sure what that looks like, what that means, but I feel like in a way, if I can learn how to heal myself internally, then I could help extend that healing to other people. So I'm thinking it might go down the realm of like Reiki or some energetic work, but 
it's in that direction. <laughs> okay. There's actually yeah. been two women who do that from when this launches, this episode airs, there will be two of them in the last month healers. So it's really, yes, bring on the healers. We need more <laughs> <of them. laughs> I don't, maybe I need you guys now because I obviously have attracted a few in a row with these interviews. So that's pretty interesting. <laughs> I am sending you positive energy, okay? I even have my little stone with me, so oh, you are. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Just accept you, it. Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to receive. Send it all over. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> all right. So when you're doing your traveling and such, do you ever take the time to read? And if so, or I guess if not, and you've ever read before, what book recommendations do you have? <laughs> are you literate? And what would you <laughs> literate? Somewhat. Um, I hope so. Yeah. If you're preparing legal documents, but <laughs> who knows? <laughs> right, you'll never know. Um, so yes, a few books that I came across while on this trip: um, "The Search Within," which is by, or "Search Inside of Yourself," which is by Ched. I'm pronouncing this wrong. Ched Mang Tan, okay. which has. That book helped lead me down the path of emotional intelligence. Um, okay. So reading it, I realized that I don't think I have any. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're being hard on yourself. <laughs> oh, you have a great laugh, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I would recommend that book for anyone that's, like, trying to go deeper inside. He also um, really beautifully illustrates the types of meditation that we do and like how our mind is just kind of running around all over the place. So that's a really good book. And then also Letting Go by David R. Hawkins. Okay. Which is basically, he goes over the, almost like a technique of actually learning how to let go physically, mentally, emotionally, because I have a lot of anxiety. So I try to hold things and I try to keep them. So letting go is definitely a process. And anyone that's trying to like actually do it, that's, I would recommend that book. Okay. That's a great recommendation. Do you (laughs) meditate? Yes. Yes. I've, um, I try to do it twice a day, sometimes three times a day, depending on how stressed I get. So um, it helps. <laughs> okay. I need it. <laughs> what, what is your method that you use and what would you recommend to someone who is trying to start meditating? Yeah. So the method that I use is I'm pretty much trying to just disconnect from my thoughts and just try to purely observe them for what they are and not try to attach onto anything. So I try to do that method. Um, for anyone that's trying to learn how or not sure, I would recommend looking up guided meditations on YouTube. Okay. I think that's the, the best way to get, get the ball rolling. Get the ball rolling. All right. I yeah. like that. Do you have any other general advice from anything that you've learned so far on your journey, both the journey that you're on physically with the travel and then just in life in general, anything that you'd like to guide the listeners toward? Yeah, I feel like one of the main things that I'm learning is just how to be completely honest with yourself. I mean, I feel like that sounds sometimes simple. It's like, Oh, I know what I'm thinking or I know how I'm feeling, but I feel like even being honest with the things that scare you or the things that you were hurt about in life, I think that is very, very difficult. So I feel like one of the greatest lessons that I'm learning is that if I could really, truly be honest with how I feel, then I feel like things just start making more sense in the world and in life and Mm -hmm. like for example I like I said I'm trying like I'm coming to understand my purpose and I feel like that would not have happened if I was living how I used to live and constantly telling myself oh you don't want that that's not true that's not meant for you blah 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 and I feel like 
it just it just takes honesty because you know what you want and you know what you need and you know where you're going to go and if you're not going to listen to yourself then you're going to listen to someone else basically that makes complete sense to me especially on the same mindset of repressing emotions oftentimes so i notice with myself sometimes my fiance and i i'll get upset about something and I'll tell myself that either I'm not upset or I shouldn't be upset or I'll just exactly. not think of it at all. And then I'll be a jerk to him <laughs> and he'll be like, what's wrong? And I'm like, nothing. <laughs> and then, exactly. Way later, I'll be like, well, I was kind of hurt or sad or mad at this. And then I held it in and made everything way worse by not just being like, hey, that sucked. And like, let's deal with that and move on and have a really good rest of the day. It's like, okay, now I'm like bitter all day. <laughs> so exactly. It's hard. It's yeah. hard. Especially if you're like really good at it, which is not something you want to be really good at, but sometimes I'll get an upsetting email and then 10 minutes later or even less, I'll be like, why am I upset right now? And I'll think, 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 oh yeah, that email that sucked. And you pushed it off right away, and now you're like crabby. <laughs> so exactly, or like being partner. upset, or like being upset and not realizing that you're upset. I feel like that happens too. Yeah, absolutely. So it just push it. We're just pushing that shit down. Unfortunately, <laughs> but it has, it has to come out eventually. Any tips on how you've been able to be more honest with yourself? Oh God. Yeah. You're going to have to go in the direction of what scares you. Um, like I don't necessarily, I don't plan my episodes too far in advance. So I let things come to me. So like if for example, something keeps on coming up for me, I know that that's the direction that I have to go. Right. So, do you post them on a regular uh, schedule or do you just kind of like, all right, I'm really feeling this right now. Here's an episode. I'm on every 10 days. Okay. I couldn't do, I couldn't do a week and I couldn't do two weeks. So I made my own schedule. <laughs> there you go. I like that. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> I also like it cause I plan to subscribe and my podcast is almost at 200 unlistened episodes. So I like that. You're not like, we have one five days a week. So I'm oh, God, I know that's, that number. That gets so overwhelming. Me it does. <laughs> like, my Less podcast stress. to-do list is so long. <laughs> right. But I think you cut, I cut you off. If you have more tips on how to be honest with yourself, I don't want to cut you short on that. Or if it was a natural pause because you were done, that's fine. Too. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't interjecting too much. Oh, okay. No, you're good. Let me think. Um, how to be more honest with yourself. <sighs> I feel like at some point you just have to, you just have to be okay with crying. And I mean, that could be a very difficult thing for some people to do, but I feel like accepting your emotions as they come up and going towards them, that that's where, that's where the honesty lives. That's like the source of it. So it's, See, these are these are very difficult. I feel like difficult topics to talk about because uh, they're so metaphysical. Absolutely. Um, but that's what's going to make this one so interesting for people. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And then I feel like meditating too. Like, get out of your head. Your head is annoying. It doesn't know. It's just all over the place. And I feel like when you can try to connect with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you the honesty is just going to come because it can't not like you can't not be who you are. Right. It's if you're not, you're just resisting yourself, which you're going to lose eventually. Right. Absolutely. Or at least I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe the next lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if people are wanting to listen to your podcast or maybe follow you on social media or check out your website, or if you have a blog, where can we find Sarah Cruz and Art of the Unknown online? Yes. So the podcast is at artoftheunknownpodcast.com. Uh, you can listen to all the episodes there. I have a little blog going around. And then my personal website is sarahcruz.co. And I'm in the process of developing some, some basic, basically guides for people to do their own 
traveling in words. So if you want to check that out, you guys can. And then... And everyone who's listening, in case you don't have the name in front of it, it's K-R-E-U-Z. For oh, yeah. It's, and it's Sarah German. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'll put it all in the show notes, too. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. Sometimes we're getting my own last name. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, so if you go to those two websites, you can get connected through Instagram or whatever, email. It's all there. Those are my little online hubs. Okay, perfect. Well, like I said, I'll put them in the show notes and hopefully people will be able to find you easily that way, just in case they're driving or something and can't write it down or whatever. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Good thinking. <laughs> so any um, time I have a podcast and this all started at, like in parties in college or maybe even high school, but I love to ask people um, if eight-year-old Sarah had a crystal ball and could look yeah. at where you are now, on a scale of 1 to 11, how excited would she be to see, you know, where you've been in those years, where you're headed to, what you're doing now? What do you think she would think? Oh, God. I, I feel like, so from 1 to 11, it would be either an 8 or a 12, just because oh. I feel like 8-year-old didn't know, like, what I wanted. So to see me doing things, I feel like, I was very confused at that time. Okay. Um, but I also feel 12 because, I mean, I feel like she'd also be proud of me that I'm trying to be honest with myself and be truthful and follow my truth as opposed to listening to everyone else's truth. So yeah, it's eight and 12. <laughs> okay. I'll take that. I like that. There's two answers. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, basically what you're doing now is making an effort to do what kids don't have to try to do. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Just, for, just be. Exactly. Yeah. Well, before our minds are all like, but what about this person and that person in society? It's, exactly. I want to exactly. do this right now, so yeah. I'm going to. <laughs> and it's more fun, right? Now we have like, you know, we could get on planes. We couldn't when we were eight years old. So yeah. there's more options now. People have more fun. Okay. <laughs> they can if they choose to. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I love it. What did you want to be when you grew up when you were a kid? Oh God. Uh, I want to go into law, which okay. I feel like I had to recently come to the realization that I wasn't going to go into law. I mean, law school was always on the table for a while. Yeah. Um, but so if I you're like preparing another... legal documents, you're still in law. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm coming to terms with the fact that like everything that I thought I wanted wasn't necessarily what I wanted. And now I'm trying to go towards what I really want. So that's again, I feel like society's pressure telling you what to do and then you have to kind of fight, fight through that, which is difficult. Well, I'm really excited to see where this all takes you. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you so much for your time and your vulnerability and sharing so much both, you know, of course with me and my podcast, but what I'm going to hear soon when I check out yours, I'm really excited. Well, thanks for having me. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Absolutely. I hope that you enjoyed Sarah's laugh and everything else that she has to offer just as much as I did. I really thought it was brave of her to share as much as she has and inspiring and hopefully I am someday able to share more of my past as well with you listeners. I think it's also very generous of her to offer that 30-day roadmap guidebook prompts to the journey to within to one of our lucky listeners. If you're interested in winning that, you you can check out www.mandiem.com slash episode 77 since this is episode 77 that is also where you will find links to find sarah online so that you can check out her podcast and her blog and all of her social media as well as the other things that she is offering on the website to support people on their journeys within so lots to check out there that i highly recommend 
I also am excited to announce, since we're talking about websites, that I have a couple of new websites that I've been working on with my team for quite a while. One of them is mandysmusthaves.com, and of course, Mandy is with an I-E, so M-A-N-D-I-E-S, must haves. And that is a site where I have basically all of my favorite things in one spot. So if you're looking for a recommendation in the motivational book department, they're mostly recommendations actually from my podcast guests. Or if you are looking for a recommendation in the makeup department, muscles, meals, all my favorite things are at that site. I also have the site Mandy's Makeup mastery.com and that is a new makeup academy I am launching for women who are busy and don't have time to search through YouTube tutorials to find what they're looking for and also don't have the time to apply and blend 79 different colors of eyeshadow which I respect and appreciate but some people have only five minutes to get ready and only want to use a few products and I am here to guide those people so check that out as well as always I would really appreciate it if you you left me a positive review on iTunes. I also would love it if you shared this with anyone who you think could use some guidance on their road to self-discovery or someone who's interested in travel or really anyone affiliated with any type of journeying that you think might be interested in this. My goal, as I always say, is to impact as many people as possible and help them get out of their comfort zones and closer to the lives of their dreams. So sharing this is one great way to help me make Make that happen. On the same note, leaving a review helps iTunes know that you find this valuable. So that is another great way for helping me reach more people and you don't even have to spend a dime. I really appreciate it. And I don't just want to inspire people and not have them take action. So you have to stay tuned for my Fearless Friday episode, which is coming out this Friday with a challenge from Sarah to hopefully again get you out of your comfort zone and closer to that dream life. So make sure you are subscribed so that you don't miss an episode. All right, as always, be bold and have a sparkly day. Bye-bye.